Hi there. Uh, we're here today. I'm going to do a little modification on my 2005 Toyota Sienna. I wanted to have the, the Garmin GPS be hardwired into the into the van so it frees up a socket in the cigarette lighter area plus it gets rid of some of the cables there and I want to do this job on the cheap so I've got uh, $7 that I can do this project and I was going to do it and I figured well I might as well make a video of it in case somebody else is interested in that. Alright so first we're going to go to the van. First step that we're going to want to do is to come in here and to uh, take apart the center console which actually is fairly easy to do you might look at this and say well you know where do I start uh, but there are no nuts and bolts right off the start what you want to do is come here with these center consoles here on the side um, where you know you have some of your accessories I've got the, the very basic model here the Sienna but you may have more plugs on here is you want to start on the top and there's a the corner up here you just want to take a screwdriver and I think the key is to be gentle don't force it too hard okay so when it comes out you know if you want to be really thorough you could detach this but I think that you know you could just kind of put it away um, enough as it is and then you want to do that on the other side as well I will show you that. Okay. There he is. Just get it a little bit. It's just held on there by pressure. Um, you know, three pressure tabs on each one. Uh, I think the best best goal is to try it from the from the top. Now this one, I don't have anything connected on that side, so it can just be put aside. And then, if, to do this job, we are going to need to remove the re the radio, um, at least move it out of the way uh, as much as we can. All you need for that is four four bolts. You'll notice two here, and then on this side, the two here, and they are ten millimeter bolts. And for this, you're going to want a lot of extensions. <laughs> this is really more than you need, but um, what you want to do is just use a socket with extensions and then go ahead and, you know, loosen those up. And then you will be able to move this out of the way. The last part that you will want to do is to remove the top portion. Um, you know, when this is, is removed, it will just come right off. But you can actually do it right now without taking the radio out if you really wanted to. Um... But, you know, once you've got the side portions off and everything, you might as well remove the radio. It is going to make it a little bit easier to install this in the future. But that's, that's really all you got to do there to get, a, to, get, to get started. And then when you put this back, it goes in like this. It goes in from back and then this snaps down so you gotta start here in the front and then work your way towards the back okay uh, the next thing we want to do now that we've got the um, this panel removed from the van is you're going to want to cut a hole in there to be able to get your to get your cord to run through down down below and you know depending on which GPS you have you're going to want to take a look at that and um, kind of size it up here. I used a piece here. This is one inch. This is a one inch diameter drill bit that I found. Um, and that, seems, that does the job very well. In fact, it might be a little bit too big, um, but I have a fix for that as well. Only problem with having it to be too big is that you know when the cord comes up, it could it could come back down, and when you put the radio and everything back, it's going to be hard to get to it. So, okay, you you need to drill that in there. 
I just used the standard drill, nothing fancy. And I will show you in a little bit how I plan on getting that to uh, stop from going back down. Okay, you'll notice here that I sped up the video a bit. Uh, basically, I'm just taking a bunch of rubber bands and making a ball over an inch thick so that the cord does not fall back into your center console area. I I think you know taping a stick onto there would work. Um, you know, a lot of different options that you have there, and uh, here you see the final the final image. Okay, my original thought was to keep the the charger um, intact and to use that without destroying it anyway. That we'll see that doesn't work so well. Um, I used a hammer. I would recommend using a pliers to pinch the nail on the head so that you can get uh, a wire wrapped around that nail to do the job a little bit better. Um, I ended up breaking it, but uh, you know, as you'll see here, um, I figured out you know there's there was this plan B, I guess. I'd still recommend doing that though. You can always go back then. Oh, fiddlesticks! All right, stop. Okay, well, I've had to uh, rethink a little bit how I'm going to do this. The time I did this, the project I did this before, I was actually able to use the original um, the original charging cord without having to really damage it. So you could completely go back and if you ever wanted to you know, undo what you did, it was completely doable. Just by putting a wire here, this is your ground, and then this up here was your live, and just wrapping a nail around that and then soldering a wire onto that. I, I'm not going to do that because I accidentally broke my adapter um, trying to do that. So first time it worked fine, second time, I would say don't try to hammer the nail on. Use the use a pliers or something to pinch it on there. But that's not a big problem because I can still use the adapter. I will just have to um, kind of do it a little bit differently than what I was imagining. I'm going to take the adapter apart, and I'll just show this here. Um, take the adapter apart, and you can see how there is a, a black and a red line here. Uh, the red line is the live wire, and the black is the ground. And I am just going to solder another wire coming out of that, into out of this hole here, and I will use that as the the way to do that. So this adapter will not be, I will not be able to use this adapter anymore um, the normal way. Um, but that's okay because um, not a big issue. Okay, I will go ahead and, and do that right now. Okay, this part I'm going to speed up as well. Uh, I disconnected the original hardware. You see the red and the black coming out. And I'm basically just taking some wire and soldering that onto the black and the red. Um, you know, I put a, a fair amount of solder on there and uh, then tape it up. You know, I didn't have the real, the best tools for this, you know, just. Yeah, I see there you got the solder. Um, try not to inhale that. <laughs> and yeah, I just put it next to the wire, put the put the solder on there, let it cool. And uh, you can always bring some get some black tape and I will do that in a little bit here. This is this is the uh, ground wire now that I am uh, soldering on there. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so then I just, I was thinking about putting the case back over it, but if I tape it down, it really doesn't matter. So make sure you tape it up good so you don't get a short. Tape it, and then I was just taped it to the adapter itself, as you can see. And that 
uh, made it pretty sturdy. I didn't, since no one's going to be seeing this, I didn't feel like I needed to put the cap back on. So here's really the only part of this uh, project that you actually need to buy something. I got this for seven dollars on Amazon. I will post a link for this. You know, this works for my um, Toyota. 2005 Sienna. Uh, there's, I believe, five or six different kinds of fuses out there. This is the low profile micro fuse. That's what the Sienna uses. I would pull out a fuse and, you know, I, you know, look at a, a website to see which fuse you're using before you purchase um, these, what they're called, it's called an Ada fuse. And they're, they're all over Amazon. They're really pretty cheap. Um, so, like I said, this project costs $7 total. I have it, you, if you have a GPS and all the other stuff, an adapter already, there's no extra cost. So, why don't we uh, come here and we'll take a look at this. Okay, the, this particular model, it offers um, where you can have whatever the fuse normally is you know let's say you're going to use this for your regular cigarette uh, lighter um, spot in your fuse box you can use almost anything you know you could use um, you know if you got motorized seats or uh, you know any any fuse you want really in there is fine and then put the fuse that you take out put it in here and then this fuse right here, while well, this per the one that I purchased came with a five amp fuse. Now I've looked at my my Garmin; it only uses about two, so you know five amp is plenty. You don't need to get a big fuse in here. Um, for what I'm going to be using, this will be more than enough. Um, this is the is the live. Um, it does not offer ground. What you're gonna, what we're gonna do, and I'll show you that when we get to the vehicle, is we are going to connect this, uh, the ground off of here directly onto um, the ground on the van. But right now we're gonna find our live, which you know, keep in mind here too that you don't twist these around that you know for sure that this is your live. You see the red wire coming out here. Um, if you did twist them around, just undo it and. Make sure on that. Don't mess that up. So this is the live. And I am going to put it in here. If it will fit entirely. It may not all fit in there. Oh, it looks like it's going to fit if you just cram it. And then I'm going to use pliers to crimp it off. Some people may want to solder this if you are very thorough. You certainly could. And because there is some wire exposed, it's best just to play it safe and tape it up. Okay, so that I think is going to give us, you know, a good connection. Um, plenty, plenty good connection right there. Okay. And with the tape on there, it is it is very sturdy. It's not going anywhere. And I taped this to the, the neck, as you can see. So that's not going to go anywhere. We're going to essentially bury all of this cable so no one's going to see this. Um, you know, unless they drop their contact in your driver's seat. Uh, then they may be looking at it and might see it. But otherwise, this is, is, is fine. It's not pretty, but no one will see it. Okay, next, our, our next step is we are going to install this. Okay, once you got it um, all taken apart, we got the radio moved out of the way. The side panels all kind of moved out of the way. We got plenty of room to work here. We're going to take our, our wiring harness here. And to, uh, let's see if we can get the camera in here. You see that, that metal bar there? Mine's got quite a bit of dust on it. Um, or whatever that is. That is actually something that you can see if you were to lay down on your stomach. 
can't see that. So what you want to do is take this wire and really just kind of snake it in. And if you know it, I'm, I don't know if you can see it. Let's see where this wire console is. Come in there like this. Now look down at the bottom, um, down by the gas pedal. And you will see that it has found its way down there, which is good. That's right where we want to be. So, you'll notice that with this, with the Garmin, there is just plenty of room. Because right here is your circuit box. And we will, you know, give you a better shot of that. Uh, right there is your circuit box. So we got plenty of room. Okay. Let's work on getting this situated now. Here. Okay, one quick note in here as I was um, installing my ground wire is I saw that the light came on on the adapter and my keys aren't in the ignition. And that reminded me of something important. Some of these circuits are hooked up so that they're always on, whether you know that's on or not. I mean, sometimes people's cigarette light <laughs> adapters work that way where they're always, there's always on. Um, some of them are not. What you want to do is, I guess, Decide beforehand whether you want your Garmin to always have power. My guess would be no. I don't know of many people who want that. Um, usually you want it when you turn off your car um, that your your power goes off onto your GPS. Most GPS have that function. It's really handy. So um, make sure when you pick something, pick something that does turn off when the power is off in the car. I picked um, heated mirrors. Uh, which I don't have in this car either, but uh, that is a function that turns off when the car is off. So that's just a, a note there. All right, so we're back. I've got the ground attached there to that bolt. Um, make sure you pick one that's actually you know attached to the frame of the car. Just a quick comment. When I first put the Atta fuse, I put it in my heated mirrors area, and uh, that wasn't a live fuse. Uh, so... You know that it didn't work. Uh, eventually, you'll see that I moved it over to the heater. Here we got heater. I would have to say the heater would not be on unless you got power. So let's go ahead and put that. Um, let's see here. It listed as being a 20 amp, so that. That's right, this one right here, it is a yellow, and we'll go ahead and put it in there. We'll see what happens. Um, actually, I'm going to have to, well that's a good, good point too. Um, this one right over here is the one that is the regular circuit. So that's where you're going to want to put your, your 20 amp. Um, replacement in. Um, okay, now I'm going to put it, plug it back in. And just so I don't get too conf behind here, I'm going to put this back into the heated mirrors, even though I do not have heated mirrors. They generously provide you with that circuit. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, so it wouldn't, it's on, it wouldn't be getting power right now because of the fact that, okay, there we go. The GPS is charging right now. Um, the, now, next project is getting the wires tucked away and then getting this all back together and then we're, we'll be all done. Okay. okay, I'm gonna speed this up here a little bit. Um, you notice I, I'm just using zip ties. It is important to make sure that you do get these cords out of the way. You don't want them to interfere with your your brake pedal or your gas pedal. Um, try to leave a lot of room up at the top here. You can see the camera is actually coming in from the radio looking down at me. Um, I was able to uh, zip tie it there to that cord and uh, you know nicely tucked it away. Keep in mind, if you have a different car, you know, is, you can do this with any vehicle. This basic concept is going to work with any vehicle here. This is just how it worked with mine.
So we basically got the project done. Uh, uh, all that's left now to do is to put the put the uh, whole center console thing back together now and should be all set. One option that kind of came to my mind, I'll just throw that out there, is you could add some weights to the bottom of this, of that, of that wire, so that um, the wire would automatically be pulled down. You could just, um, like electrical tape some, I don't know, nuts or washers on there, uh, just enough to, to pull the wire down. I don't think I'm gonna do that right now, so. We'll just, uh, I'll just put this back together now. Okay, so I just wanted to do a quick uh, recap here of my, of the finished job. I got everything uh, put back. The wires are all tucked away. Notice you will not see anything there. Um, wondering what that is. That is a uh, thermometer. That was a different modification I did to this van. Yeah, maybe I'll do a video about that some other time. Um, but, you know, you'll notice here there's no wires hanging down. Both of my cigarette lighter adapters are are open. Kind of nice there. And uh, there you got the GPS. I'm just going to put it in here and get it started. Okay. And you'll notice that it comes on um, with it on there. So, you know, it gives it a nice clean look here. Uh, in the front dash, no wires coming down, and uh, you got your, your GPS in there. So, just a, a couple of comments there on this. I think it's a it's a cheap job, $7, a few odds and ends that you probably got around the house. And takes, well, you know, it took me a, about an hour and a half, um, especially, you know, I ran into that little snag there with the adapter breaking. I can't go back to the way it was now. Not a big deal. Those, I think I bought that adapter on Amazon for 15 bucks. So, you know, yeah, you don't want to completely wreck it, but I was able to use it again. Um, I think that's about it. Thanks for, you know, the other video I did. You know, I got a lot of uh, good comments and, uh, you know, kind of what encouraged me to, to go ahead and do this. This, uh, this isn't really such a necessary job but it's a kind of a, a cheap easy nice modification to do when you've got some free time and uh you want to do that okay well thanks for watching